going to be looking at are the 1988 Shockwave. Uh, this is my little buddy Jake. Uh, he uh, is about 12 years old, blind and deaf, unfortunately. But uh, I promised somebody that he would make a, an appearance, uh, a fellow pet lover. So here he is. Say hi to everybody, Jake. Yeah, good boy. There you go. Come on down. Yeah, I call him Bump and Go, because that's how he finds his way around the house uh, outside of uh, following scent. Uh, he just kind of bumps into things and moves along. But he has the house memorized, a uh, miraculous part of nature. Uh, helps us to adapt to sudden changes. So, let's get into this review here. All right, so let's pick up from there. Shockwave came out in 1988. He was on the shelves until 89 when he was discontinued domestically. 1990, he was a part of the 7th series. His original retail price was from around 295. Uh, there wasn't anything listed on yojo.com about the price, but uh, that's just a, an educated guess um, going from what I have found in the past and price research. Uh, Shockwave was a very popular, well, I should say was, is a very popular action figure especially the Night Force Shockwave. Night Force anything, as we know, is just insanely popular. Uh, uh, their, uh, the prices are just outlandish at the moment, really, but uh, I could cover more of that in a segment of my show, another segment of the show. But I never had Shockwave as a child. Um, I remember seeing him on the pegs and uh, passing him up for some odd reason. I think um, I saw something that appealed to me a little bit more, obviously, or I would have bought Shockwave. But I'm trying to think of the action figure, and I think it, it just may have... Um, been one of the Iron Grenadiers, so that was a pretty good uh, trade-off, in my opinion. So, uh, Shockwave was a police officer, a SWAT officer, uh, acronym Special Weapons and Tactics. Uh, he is essentially the special forces of the police department, but he wasn't the only police officer in the G.I. Joe line. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at this action figure. All right, so here he is, uh, Shockwave in all of his glory. Uh, he is the third in line of the in a succession of G.I. Joe police officers or military police, MPs. So, starting in 1983, we were given Mutt. And his pal, Junkyard. And in 1987, we got Law and Order, who was the first official... MP, even uh, though Mutt had that role. Uh, he does have a badge here on his chest. I'll get more into that when I review him. Let's go ahead and take a look at Shockwave's accessories. I uh, wish he did come with a figure stand back then, but we didn't get that until the 90s, as most of us know. All right, first thing we'll take a look at is this very very nice backpack it has a lot of sculpted on pockets pouches even has a flashlight 
two pouches, three pouches on the side, has a nice holder for his knife, just serrated on the back, the typical Rambo style knife, uh, made out of a very soft silver plastic, and slots right into the back there. I love those features when you could put an accessory onto a backpack. He came with a pistol that was reused over and over again. Uh, this pistol also came with Blizzard. Uh, very nice 45 style looking pistol, but um, I, yeah, it does look like a uh, 45 model 1911. Uh, very nicely sculpted. Uh, only problem I would have with that is there's no trigger guard, so you're just asking for problems there. He came with a an Uzi with a uh, silencer on it. Uh, watch out for this on the aftermarket. Um, this is attached by a very, very thin piece of plastic. And um, a lot of these are broken off as well as the collapsible shoulder stock. So uh, be careful of that. Okay, and looking at Shockwave here. A very cool action figure. Uh, I would like to use him as a troop builder or an army builder simply because his face is obscured and you know kind of really gives him no identity but shockwave is wearing a tactical blue uniform uh, great for urban environments i was going to review a modern alley viper but i figured why not show his counterpart and this is it's definitely shockwave so he is wearing a bulletproof vest uh, this looks like a riot vest actually he has a another knife sculpted on the front it is ribbed around the back he has the harness for his backpack wearing a very nice balaclava uh, the first joe we saw wearing one of these was can you guess that's right, beachhead. Uh, he's wearing a also a blue camouflaged ball cap on his legs. We have a holster with another pistol. You have a pouch down on the left leg, or the right leg. My apologies. On his left leg, another pistol. So he could do a double pistol draw on you if he needed to. And mind you, he's going up against Cobra or some drunken Joe on the base who's just causing a little too much of a ruckus with his promotion party. It's her first promotion in 30 years, so, he, you know, Shockwave needs to come in armed. Now, his boots are pretty standard-looking boots. There's a little bit of sculpting on them. Nothing too remarkable about those. Now, the seller sent along the trading card with him pretty cool on the back of the trading card has a picture a shockwave now these came out in 1991 i had a whole set of them uh, i bought back in 93 and i had opened them all and had them in a nice album and it just got lost over the years through moves so it gives a um breakdown of his file card. This is card number 20 in series 1. So let's go ahead and take, let's go ahead and take a look at the file card. Very nicely clipped. I like this. It came off of his uh, card back from the original packaging. Has a nice little ad for the Super Trooper on there. Weird action figure. On the bottom corner here, it reads H1. 
Now, this is just my opinion, but um, I have found file cards for the same action figures that have an empty corner or the other corner has H1. Now, from this best as I could determine, H1 would be the second release. So this came out the second release of Shockwave in 1990. So the upper left hand corner reads, codenamed Shockwave, SWAT spe Specialist. Uh, his file name is Faria Jason A, serial number 36909654. Uh, primary military specialty, special weapons and tactics, secondary military specialty, choir. Okay. So, when he's not fighting battles, he could be singing the G.I. Joe anthem. Now, his birthplace is Dearborn, Michigan. I have been there. Uh, Dearborn trace, train station uh, has a little bit of history to it. Uh, grade E4, so he's a specialist. Middle paragraph reads, Shockwave was the youngest member of the D Detroit Police Department SWAT team and holder of two citations for bravery when he he signed up for and was accepted by the Joe, Joe team so he can sing and he is brave. Well, he could also lull a uh, criminal to sleep by singing a lullaby. When asked why he left a promising career to work longer hours for less money, kicking down doors on better armed adversaries, Shockwave we put replied, what, you think I do this for the money? Okay, he enjoys his job, and that is awesome. A happy employee is a productive employee. Everybody, uh, quotation here in the, the bottom uh, paragraph here, everybody on the SWAT team has a specific job, like in a choir. Choirs have tenors, baritones, altos, etc. SWAT teams have sharpshooters, climbers, and inside men. Shockwave is the door kicker, so does that make him a baritone? He is the first inside and to, to find out how badly it really is. He's also a half-decent tenor. Okay, sorry my correction, he's a tenor. I, I can't stop harping on that, no pun intended, uh, when his voice is in shape. Okay, so we have a door kicking tenor. Now, I used to sing on a choir, in a choir, I should say. So, had a little fun joking about that. I also played the tenor sax in, uh, in school. Uh, didn't quite, I enjoyed the saxophone, but just really couldn't um, dedicate myself to it. Uh, I had, my mind was busy wandering and thinking of things other than my sheet music. So Shockwave is a great action figure. I never had him as a kid. Uh, in a lot of ways, I wish I would have bought him. But um, I'm glad I have him now. Uh, he is a very popular action figure. So um, finding him is relatively easy. Uh, he is definitely uh, quite available on the aftermarket. But um, get ready to pay for him. Uh, especially the uh, Night Force Shockwave. Just about anything, well, anything Night Force get ready to pay a lot for. But um, in my research today, there were two bids on a complete Night Force Shockwave. And um, it was already up to $99. So if you want Night Force, go with my blessing. Uh, you're going to pay, pay for him. Uh, yeah, that's all I'll say about Night Force. That's all I have to say about that. Uh, but I, like I said, I never had Shockwave when I was a kid, so I really can't share any stories about him. 
Um, I wish I could. I enjoy sharing those stories from my childhood, uh, from getting a lot of good feedback from my viewers. Um, they, and I'll say it, reminds them of their childhood and a lot of memories that come along with that. So I'm glad I could share that with you guys. So let's get into my favorite topic, my favorite segment of the show, Byron's Gripes. Uh, just a disclaimer here, I, I am not picking on eBay or any of the sellers on eBay. I use eBay myself not only to shop but to uh, sell items on. Um, so I, I understand a little bit where these guys are coming from and prices but at the same time, wow, really because it says GI Joe on it does not make it valuable. Yes, there are some out there who that are valuable. Uh, let's say for the international release releases of Tiger Force here in the States, those are valuable. Night Force is valuable. Special Mission Brazil is valuable because they were exclusive releases to Toys R Us. And those were a little bit harder to find. Um, I never bought any of those as a child. I know I would still have them if I did. Um, but when I really didn't shop at Toys R Us all that much. Uh, for me, it was Walmart and Kmart, wherever I could ride my bicycle to, uh, an occasional outlet mall. Yeah, Cause that was close to where I could ride my bicycle to. So Toys R Us was a little stretch to get to uh, if I didn't have my parents driving me. Uh, the city bus wasn't even running in that direction at that time. So, out here, right here on my whiteboard, I'll write, you want a complete, a complete shockwave. You're looking at $22 to $34.99. And I will tell you right off the, the bat, $22 is the deal of the day. Oh, excuse me, deal of the day. That is the cheapest I found him, and I would say grab him right now. Um, that is a great deal on him. There's some selling out there just by themselves, just a standalone loose action figure. $10. <laughs> to $17.99. Uh huh. $17.99. These are fixed prices. They are not auction prices. Um, I only mention auction prices is if they have something significant to show. And, you know, for instance, I'm talking about the Night Force Shockwave, just telling you how high it is just with two bids. Uh, so I always do the fixed prices because they're not fluid like a um, auction would be. So you want one that's incomplete, $13.99 to $15.99. I would say buy one that is partially complete or buy one that is complete because his accessories will run your ticket up a lot higher and you're having to pay for shipping on those accessories, so f factor that in with your price. Um, incomplete with file card, $19.99, not bad, not bad at all. Um, so you could you know, buy the pistol and the, the knife and you'll still be okay because you're paying for the file card. You're getting the file card with them. A full card back goes from $19.99 to $34.99 is it trimmed in gold is it a rare one of a kind i just came by myself with an armed guard 
when it was originally released? No, it is just the standard file card. $34.99? Come on. Really? I mean, it wasn't that impressive. No. Now, let's say if Super Trooper came on a, a full card back and he was a mail away, yeah. I could see $34.99 for that. But mail aways didn't come with, with a full card back. Come on, really? It's these kind of prices that really, really irritate me, not only as a buyer, but for the other people out there who are struggling, who want to share this, this wonderful time of their life their hobby with their children and it's hard for them for some people to purchase these given the higher price and even for those with means say these prices are very high and it's just it's really frustrating so if you want his backpack it's eight dollars Now, uh, there's a file card out there with the backpack, $7.99. Very nice. Uh, that's definitely a, a chase after. Um, complete Shockwave with this file card, $28 to $35.88. I wouldn't pay more than $33 honestly and 33 for me is really stretching it uh, I paid a lot less for this when I purchased him purchased him seven months ago so the price on shockwave for complete it's, it's gone up a, a bit but not too bad and for the incomplete standalone shockwave it's come down so I'm noticing a nice evening out in the market on some of these action figures which makes me happy uh, his waist unbroken 599 to 995 so if you need to replace one I wouldn't pay more than 599 for it his torso three bucks Right arm 595 or 599, his head 299. Uh, just the file card is 599 to 699. Uh, yeah, okay, that's that's not too bad if you need the file card and you have everything else. His knife seven bucks, and I, I completely understand that the knife being seven bucks because that was probably something that wasn't played with a lot it's small easy to lose uh, I can't tell you how many things like a little microphone that I had on my lifeline version 2 that I had it all these years all of these years and all of a sudden you know I, I pick them up and it's gone it fell on the floor to the, to the the abyss of lost toys I could not find it. My carpet is beige. It's somewhat easy to see a white object on there. I had no idea where it went. So I was not happy with that. Uh, his pistol, 295. His uh, machine gun, uh, 490, 499. Um, there is a machine gun out there for sale uh, that's missing the shoulder stock, uh, $1.99. Now, we have another deal of the day here. And this looks really good in the Joeflation that we're in right now. Joeflation is the inflation of G.I. Joe. I just came up with that word. We have a bubble right now that's over the G.I. Joe market. We all know what happened with the housing bubble, right? 
it's just got huge people buying houses left and right and it bursts comes in on us and everything is worthless but houses could be built vintage GI Joe even though they're being built they're not the vintage GI Joes there are a lot of customizer out the customizers out there and I'm starting to lean more towards those customs not only are they really cool I love the customs but you know you get any GI Joe that you wanted at a fraction of the price and that is great so Joeflation we have the bubble building up and someday it's going to pop and the prices are going to drop right back down and that's the time to start buying and they'll bring the prices right back up again never ending cycle on that so the second deal of the day which this is the first time for that as well you could get a lot of four of them for and they're complete, no file cards, but they are complete for $79.99. 80 bucks makes them 20 bucks a piece. Yes, that is cheaper than a standalone complete action figure for $22. And you're getting four of them. Snatch that up, guys. If you have the 80 bucks, snatch it up. Then you have a troop belt, army belt, whatever word, phrase you choose to use, shockwave, so you have the start of your own SWAT team. Excellent deal on that. So, all that being said, thank you guys very much for tuning in. Uh, sorry, a little short of breath. Um, go ahead and, and check down in this, the description. I have um, some things I'm going to be mentioning down there. Um, you know, as far as my coffee account goes, um, my um, Patreon accounts, and a GoFundMe page. Um, with the, the GoFundMe, uh, I would really like to go out to Joe Fest this year. Uh, never made it out to Joe Con. Things were always coming up to where I couldn't go. Um, and it, it's something I'd like to do at least once uh, in my life. And uh, I've been unable to work uh, because of, of my uh, current health situation. Uh, I don't, don't want to get in, into all that. Um, I did try putting in a day of work and just couldn't do it. Um, I ended up in an empty room attached to an oxygen, attached to the <laughs> oxygen on the wall. Uh, I, I just couldn't do it um, in my, my field. Uh, being in healthcare, it just would not look good. Somebody you know, supposed to be taking care of you is uh, pushing an oxygen tank into your room when you're attached to it. And it's, it's just difficult for me to work, let's just put it that way. So uh, I, don't, I don't expect anybody to help with that. Uh, it's just a personal goal that I have to make it out there. I have had some contributors and I thank them each personally uh, so I really appreciate their help on that uh, but um, yeah and just some shout outs I'd like to give the people too will be down in the description as well so anyway I thank all of you very much from the bottom of my heart especially especially to my my latest subscribers you guys are great Thank you so much. When I reach 250 subscribers, I will be holding a giveaway. And it will be a nice prize. I, I promise you that. 250 is a, it's a milestone for, for me. And I, I'm really grateful. So please share this video with your friends. I uh, also want to thank, personally, uh, HCC788, um, Brian. 
good friend of mine, known for a while now, uh, he asked me to join in on uh, his Alley Viper review uh, with the Alley Viper costume. Now, I, I want to explain something with the Alley Viper costume. Yeah, this is not an Alley Viper helmet. It did come bright orange, I just added the paint to it. Uh, I've created my own spin on the Alley Viper. Um, he's Alley Viper Medic. The uh, Medic Viper, if you want to add add that to there. Um, this video is copywritten, so I want to hear a bunch of Alley, Alley Viper Medics out there. Just kidding, you could use it. Um, so I figured it, the helmet would help him stand out from the, the other Alley Vipers out there. Now uh, he is an Alley Viper, but um, he, he's the medic. He, he does go on missions, obviously, and he does uh, support the Alley Vipers and um, also use to help, helps in interrogations and stuff. So just a persona. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I do love the Alley Viper. So thank you very much, HCC. That just made my year. It, it really did. That, that was an honor appearing on his show. And uh, I'm, I'm open for anybody out there who would like to do a collaboration. Um, they're, they're fun. I've collaborated before in the past with other viewers and or um, other reviewers and um, I, I enjoy it. it. It just helps us all share the love of collecting toys and it helps keep this alive out there. And um, also head over to Twitter. Um, there's a guy on Twitter right now who has put out a petition, I signed it last night, uh, for Hasbro to start making G.I. Joe again. And I think that is great. He has a Patreon account, not a Patreon, but a GoFundMe page, a $4 donation, or any donation, will um, help his cause. Um, he, he's, fun, he's somebody has stepped up. And I'm, I'm glad. So I, I hope Hasbro listens. If we get enough people to um, uh, sign that petition. So anyway, enough jawing. Uh, I'm running out of air, and I'm sure you guys are tired of hearing from me. So thanks again to every one of you out there, the channel supporters and my new subscribers. You guys are great. Thank you all very much. Uh, I wish I could name you all by name, but um, that's a, a day long process because uh, there's so many people out there that I'm, I have a lot of gratitude for. Uh, so thank you guys very much. Once again, you have a great day. Be safe, be kind to everybody, be kind to animals. This is Joe Motion Videos 82 signing off. Bye bye.